So that is, we, we just start. Um, we do it the open space way. Those who are here are the right ones. There cannot be more and there cannot be better. Um, I just want to start with a short wrap up and just uh, as, as a kind of reminder, we had a kind of journey together, took a train together, an adventure together. And we just want to do a kind of wrap up of where did this train stop? And this will be done by, by David Bollier. And then it's just, it will be a short wrap up and then a couple of announcements which are important to organize uh, the work today. And then we go directly to the breakout sessions. Thanks. We just thought it would be appropriate to sort of pause for a moment and reflect about uh, <clears throat> where we've come and what we still need to do on this final day. Uh, I mean, I'm sort of struck here in 2013, the distance we've come since 2010 when a lot of us were just coming together as self-identified commoners for the first time and saying, oh, you're a commoner too. And now I think the conversations are f so much at a different level in terms of how can we systematize, how can we expand, how can we fortify what we're doing. And it's a, in some ways the same, but in some ways a very different, more uh, advanced discussion. Um, and it, it reminds me of, I think, the lesson that Johannes taught, taught us last night uh, when we, about our lesson in rhythm and how it's an entirely natural process to self-organize and... Uh, engage in this personal and collective discovery uh, and that it's actually a fair amount of fun as well uh, because I think we're, we're mutually coordinating our visions and actions even though we, we all may play very different parts with very different talents in different parts of the world. But I'd like to review some of the key themes and keynotes from the last uh, day and a half to just refresh our memory of some of the issues we've talked about and, and where we've come. Of course, we started with Stefano Rodata's plea to make commoning a human right uh, that had recognition in constitutional law and, and international law. And then that followed by uh, Maristello Svampa's account of neoliberalism and neo-extractivism uh, in Latin America and the role of the commons that the commons can play in challenging uh, the horrible effects of enclosure there. And of course, Silka outlined some of the key principles of the commons that I think help bring into sharper focus some of our very diverse efforts and clarifies what the commons is not, uh, which I think is, again, a process we need to, to uh, pay attention to going forward. Uh, Josh Farley helped describe some of the internal contradictions and uh, incoherence of the standard economic narrative with respect to uh, managing natural resources and how the commons can play a constructive role there. And Ugo Matai uh, pointed to the, the raw political challenges of commonifying public services in, uh, in Naples. Uh, Miguel Vieira uh, pointed to the new conversation that we need to have about infrastructure as a commons, which is especially challenging because this is a, a somewhat uh, underdeveloped uh, conversation and uh, will take some time to get our bearings and orient ourselves in a shared conversation about what the real challenges are there. Uh, Heike Loschmann gave us a very useful framework for thinking about labor, or I should say work and care work, in a new way uh, as a commons. And uh, I'm going to be very interested to see what pr proposals the stream might have for advancing further there. Uh, Jem Bendel gave, urged us to start some new initiatives to make uh, money a, and credit a commons. I was quite excited by the uh, sense of uh, determination to move forward with something practical there. And I, th I do think the time is ripe as a number of different parties are starting to find each other. And I think there's going to be some kind of explosive synergies there. And finally, Carolina Batero gave us a passionate analysis of the power shifts that can occur if only we reclaim our own knowledge and information. Uh, that's well along, but uh, we need to go, as Soka pointed out, beyond the openness that some of us mistake for a commons. So the streams have started to dive into the complexities of each of these topics, and so the challenges and difficulties are becoming clearer 
even if the work is becoming a little harder. And of course, this is going to take more time than we can solve in this one conference, which is why I think uh, we need to move forward today thinking about how we can continue these conversations and develop some projects and networks uh, and other ways to keep the conversations going and to keep the activity going so there'll be something that will persist and move forward. You know, in, in evolutionary science, they have this idea of punctuated equilibria where it's not as if uh, innovation is in one linear path. There's a burst at a certain time of all sorts of innovation which then recoalesces into new forms that reach a new level of organization and support ecosystem style. I like to think of this conference as kind of this exercise in punctuated equilibrium. We're having a burst of innovation. I think part of our challenge is to find the new ways to connect and keep this uh, proto-ecosystem or emerging ecosystem uh, stable so that it can evolve. So as we move forward, I think it's important we think about the relationships that we have started here or uh, resumed here and think about how we can nurture and expand them. And uh, we need to think about how each of us can commit to doing something to keep up the self-coordinating rhythms that we began. And uh, I want to thank Johannes for helping us teach us and remind us that it really all starts here with the rhythm we all share. So let's keep that spirit up, and uh, I look forward to what the streams produce in the, in the rest of today. Thank you.